Let's look at the trans 1, 2 disubstitution pattern. Again, 1, 2 tells us that the methyl groups are attached to carbons 1 and 2 of the cyclohexane ring. Trans informs us that the methyl groups are on opposite sides of the ring. That's to say, if we drew a horizontal dotted line through one of the carbons in the ring, one of the methyl groups would be above, up from this line, the other methyl group would be below, down from this line. In this chair conformation, both methyl groups are equatorial. OK, so what steric strain does this conformational chair arrangement have? There is one Gauche interaction, and this adds 3.8 kilojoules per mole. But if we look, there are no 1,3 diaxial interactions. So the total energy added to the molecule due to the steric strain is 3.8 kilojoules per mole. Let's take this chair and ring flip it. What can we see in this alternate chair now? Well, both methyl groups are axial, and that's certainly different. But look carefully, and you'll see both methyl groups are still on opposite sides of the ring, so that stayed the same. What about steric strain present? Well, now there are no Gauche interactions. But we do have 1, 3 diaxial interactions. In fact, we have four 1, 3 diaxial methyl hydrogen interactions. One of those would add 3.8 kilojoules per mole, so four add 15.2 kilojoules per mole. The total steric strain adds energy of 15.2 kilojoules per mole for this chair conformation. So the upper chair has steric strain added of 3.8 kilojoules per mole. The lower chair has steric strain added of 15.2 kilojoules per mole. The difference is 11.4 kilojoules per mole. And this means the upper chair is greater than 99% present. There's very, very little of that lower chair because it is higher energy.